Hello folks, welcome back to The Slice. I'm about to tell you why Roger Federer beat Rafael Nadal in such a dominant fashion at the Shanghai Masters. Here's The Slice. So, before I get going, I just want all the Rafael Nadal fans to get prepared for a trigger warning because you know, you guys all say, he's so biased. You're such a Fed fan. You're such a Fed tard. It's, I'm just recapping this match. And in this match, Federer destroyed Nadal. And the main reason wasn't because Nadal sucks or wasn't any of that. Federer just played probably the best match of the year for him. He was absolutely dominant. The first thing that he was dominant in was his timing was impeccable. From the, right from the get-go, in the first couple of games, we saw him just... Anytime Nadal would get the ball deep, which is usually a really good shot in tennis, that's what you want to do, Federer would be able to anticipate and just clip forehand, kind of half volley, and they'd be winners, some of them, just cross quarter, put it down the line, put Nadal on the defensive, so he had to, then Nadal came, or Federer came on the offensive in the rally, so his timing was just impeccable. He seemed super prepared for every shot, like he wasn't uh, reacting to Nadal's shot, but shots but he was more anticipating them and getting moving his feet and quickly getting into position in order to do damage when even when he's on the defensive his serving was the best it's been all year his he was dominant on serve nadal could not touch his he couldn't get any in his service games at all to put it in perspective nadal only won eight points in the whole match on federer's serve so that's brutal not on nadal's part but federer was just he was hitting aces and uh yeah, he just wasn't let, allowing Nadal into his service games at all. Um, another thing I noticed in the match was Federer's depth of his shot. Everything it seemed like Federer was hitting was deep. It was two or three feet from the baseline. And just Fe Nadal could never get on the front foot and just never started attacking. And when Nadal did attack, Federer was able to anticipate, like I said, and just play amazing defensive tennis. His down-the-line backhand. So Nadal, when he'd have an attacking shot, which he normally attacks Federer's backhand, Federer was hitting this backhand over it like he's been doing all year, which is one of the reasons why he's had such a great comeback, like you've seen in my other video about his comeback. But he was hitting these down-the-line backhands um, really well. So Nadal would hit an attacking shot, and Federer would hit it down the line on the run, but it would be like almost like an offensive shot then because Nadal, Nadal would be on the back foot having to dump it cross-court, and then it would be back to a neutral rally where Federer could take advantage. So it was just a dominant performance by Federer. He just played completely clean. After the match, Nadal said in the press conference, he's like, I don't know how many unforced er errors Federer had, but it seems like he didn't have any. So he even he just said he was too good today. Uh, and Nadal did not play his best, I don't think. He was hitting, missing a lot of shots. He had a lot of unforced errors in the first set, especially, but that's probably a mark of just how good Federer's level was, and that's putting somebody off. It's very rare that you see both players play absolutely unbelievable and that you never see it for an entire match. It usually ebbs and flows. But today, or a couple of days ago, Federer got the better of Nadal in Shanghai, and it was an amazing display of tennis. From the fans, every, and if you watch a highlight video, pretty much all you hear them going is, oh my, oh, oh. They're, like, they're like just shocked every time the rallies happen. So it was, an it was an amazing match to watch. Federer played out of his mind. And uh, it was one of the most dominant performances of the year. It wasn't a blowout. It was still a close match. 6-4, six, 6-3. Six, it was a great match to watch. I'm not saying that it was a blowout. But Federer did dominate in the match. And it was very reminiscent, actually, of Federer's win over Nadal in Indian Wells. It wasn't in the final, but it was a very similar kind of... Federer was just on his game, and Nadal couldn't uh, get into it on these fast, faster hard courts in Shanghai. So that is why Federer beat Nadal. And... He's pushed himself back in the conversation for player of the year. There's going to be an upcoming the ATP World Tour Awards where they hand out different awards for player of the year, comeback player of the year, coach of the year, etc., which I'll be doing a video uh, preview for. Um, Federer pushed himself back into contention for player of the year. Right now, Nadal is definitely my pick for player of the year because he's the number one player in the world and he's won the most amount of tournaments. But Federer is definitely winning the Shanghai Rolex Masters, uh, winning his third Masters of the year, I think. That's right, that third Masters of the year. Definitely puts him back in the in the contention with Nadal uh, for the year and number one and player of the year award, I would say. So thanks for watching, and that was the slice on what happened in Shanghai because it was very exciting, and not a lot of people were tuning into the Asian swing uh, as per usual, but stay tuned to the slice, and you'll always know what's happening. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. Head over to theslicetennis.com for articles, videos, and news on the world of tennis. I also got some polls up there that you can go check out. 
So go there, subscribe down below for more content like this, and stay tuned to improve your life as a tennis fan.